Hello and a very warm welcome to Large Group. This is our second video looking at the theme of God as Promise Keeper. Today we're looking at the story of Abraham and our Bible reading is from Genesis 15. We'll start with our prayer for the world, then have our reading. I'll share some reflections from today's story before we have this week's activity. Just a little reminder that our sheets for families are available in the description below. These sheets have study questions, some activity and game ideas, and a craft. Hope you find these helpful. Our prayer is brought to us by Lizzie this week, and then we'll have our Bible reading, which is Genesis 15 verses 1 to 6. So you might want to read all of Genesis 15. Hi, my name is Lizzie, and I'll be leading today's prayer. This week, I'd like us to pray for people in countries where elections have been taking place or will be taking place soon. In Belarus, there are mass protests because many people believe that the election was not run fairly. In America, everyone is getting ready for the election in November, where Joe Biden will challenge President Trump. Even when we have elections, when people take different sides, it's important for us to respect and treat other people how we would like to be treated. Loving God, we pray this morning for peace in Belarus that everyone protesting would be safe and that justice will be done in relation to the election results. We also pray for people in the United States of America as they get ready for the vote in November. Help us all to remember to show respect to people we disagree with and to remember how much we have in common. Now we'll say our prayer for the world. Lord of all creation, we pray for countries where elections have been taking place, from the tallest to the smallest, for peace, joy, love, now and always. Amen. Today's reading is from the book of Genesis, chapter 15, verses 1 to 6. God's covenant with Abram. After this, Abram had a vision and heard the Lord say to him, Do not be afraid, Abram. I will shield you from danger and give you a great reward. But Abram answered, Sovereign Lord, what good will your reward do me since I have no children? My only heir is Eliezer of Damascus. You have given me no children, and one of my slaves will inherit my property. Then he heard the Lord speaking to him again. This slave, Eliezer, will not inherit your property. Your own son will be your heir. The Lord took him outside and said, Look at the sky and try to count the stars. You will have as many descendants as that. Abram put his trust in the Lord, and because of this, the Lord was pleased with him and accepted him. Just to recap from last time. In the Bible, God made promises to people and people made promises to God. When people make promises to God, they can find it really difficult to keep them because they're tempted to go their own way. When God makes promises to people, he always keeps them because he can and will never break a promise that he makes. A promise in the Bible can also be known as a covenant. The solemn promise that God makes to Abraham is what was called a covenant, a legally binding agreement. In the Bible, it refers to the agreement that God has made with his people. After the flood, which we heard about last time, God made an agreement with Noah never to destroy all people on earth again in that way. God then promised Abraham that he would make a great nation out of his descendants. After rescuing the Israelites from Egypt, God makes a covenant with Moses. If the people obey, they will be God's people. God gives the law written on two large stones or tablets. These are kept in the Ark of the Covenant, a special Akakia wooden chest. There was a problem. The Israelites never kept the agreement. They worshipped false gods and broke the law. So God said he would draw up a new agreement, not of rituals, sacrifices and circumcision but written on people's hearts and minds. This new agreement was brought into being through Jesus. He established it at the Last Supper and sealed it with his death. The idea is picked up in the two sections of the Bible, which use the word testamentum, Latin for covenant. So the Bible is really the old and new agreements. Last time I read out a few promises from our jar. I wonder if you can remember what any of those were. Way, way back in the book of Genesis, in the Old Testament, there was a man called Abram. Not Abraham, but Abram. God made his name longer later. 
Years and years had passed since Noah and the flood, but the world didn't get any better. God was getting ready to do something about it. He was going to make all things right, and he was going to do it through one family, Abraham's family. Through Abraham, Jesus would be born. How many generations would it take to get from Abraham to Jesus? Around 42 generations. But there was a problem. Does anyone know what that was? Abraham was too old. How old? At least 75. Abraham had stopped hoping that he would have someone to pass his wealth on to. He had no heir, no son. But the Lord said to Abraham, look up into the sky and count the stars if you can. So shall your offspring be. Later, God talks about how Abraham's descendants will be as the many grains of sand on the seashore. How many? Infinity. Well, I'm sure Abraham was excited, but the fact remained that he and Sarah did not have any children for such a long time. So Abraham had to choose to trust God to work a miracle. Abraham believed God and God saw this as righteousness. It was his belief and his trust in God, not his actions, that made him right with God. That's the kind of faith God wants us to have as well. God wants us to believe that he will fulfill his promises, even when it looks like there's no way he can keep them. God is pleased when we trust him and he sees our faith as righteousness too. We can believe God even when it seems impossible. Hopefully this is a helpful reminder that we can trust God in every situation and that he will deliver on his promises to us. I wonder if you can take a moment to think about one promise, one thing you asked for in prayer that God has answered. If he hasn't answered it yet, maybe you can pray for it again or ask God why he hasn't answered you yet. Remember we said before that God doesn't always answer our prayers in the way that we expect? At the end of this video, you can listen to the song, Nothing Is Impossible, which is in the description below. After you've taken some time to reflect, you can continue to praise God by singing the song, God Always Keeps His Promises. Join in with the actions and celebrate that God always keeps his promises to us. For younger children, you could always listen to Father Abraham. Again, these are all in the description below. We're now going to have our activity for this week. Hi everyone, good to see you again. Come and make a mobile with me. So everyone, here is what we need to make our mobile. We need a piece of A4 paper or card. If you have it in a nice bright colour, that will be really good. And you can see that I have drawn a spiral shape. It's like a snail shape on this card that we're going to cut out in a minute. So we need scissors and we're going to be drawing some star shapes to add on to our mobile. And my little cheat for this is I'm using some cookie cutters that I have to draw some good star shapes with my trusty Sharpie pen. Other pens are available. I'm also going to use some glue, but sometimes I find the glue is not quite good enough. So if you had a stapler, that would be a really good thing to have. And the last thing is a bit of card or paper, maybe in two or three other colours um, for things that we're going to attach on. And you can see that I've written my memory verse on this one and it says God keeps his promises even if they seem impossible. And that's from the book of Genesis in the Bible and chapter 15. And that's the important bit. I want that to stand out. Your grown up might want a coffee to help them through this. Let's get started. So you can see that I'm now trying to cut round my spiral shape. And I'm going to keep going right in to the very centre. And that's what's going to give us our nice dangling mobile shape. It's going to take some time so you can see what I'm doing towards the end. And so 
So now I've come right into the very center of the spiral. So when I lift it up, you can see it's almost like a big long snake. And what I'm going to do now is put a tiny little hole in the top of this. And I'll use the end of my scissors to do this. You might want to get a grown up to help you. Um, just to put a little hole in there. And this is how we're gonna hang the mobile up. So I'm gonna use some of my string or thread. This is some um, things that you would use for tying up gifts. I'm gonna cut some of this to thread through the top. So I've now threaded my string through and I've tied a knot in the bottom so that when I pull it to the top like that, it's not gonna come undone. So that's how it's gonna hang from wherever I hang it. Now we get to decorate. You can decide to draw things all along your spiral, but what I'm gonna do is stick things onto the spiral so that they hang off at cool angles. Okay, so now I've got my spiral and I've got my star shapes and I've got my memory verse all cut out, ready to go. I've also got my ribbon. I'm using gift ribbon, but if you have um, string or um, some actual real ribbon, anything like that would do. I'm going to start with the most important bit, which is my memory verse. That I want to remember that God does keep his promises. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to staple on the ribbon to the end of my mobile like that. And then I'm going to staple on the memory verse. Like that. And that's going to hang off the very end. And then I'm just going to work my way around. I've cut out stars. Maybe you want to do different shapes. You might want to do hearts or diamonds, whatever shape you like you could use. So you're going to staple on the ribbon and then uh, staple on your shape. Now, if you don't have a stapler or if you would prefer to use glue, there we go, then you can do that. So I'm just going to do a few more of these and then we'll see what the finished thing will look like. So here is my finished mobile. You can see what it looked like when it was flat on the desk with all my things stuck on to the sides and then staples hold it nice and fast. And the memory verse is hanging from the bottom. Hope you have fun making yours and that you remember that God does keep his promises. Please remember to share your pictures using the hashtag drawwithrachelpsgs or email them directly to me. Here are some that we've been sent this week. Thanks for joining us today. Hope to see you again next week. Bye.